Welcome to Data Structures in C++. In this video, we're going to get set up with our unit tests for this stat class that we created in the last video. Now before we set up our unit tests, I had to add two comments down here for our functions pop and top, reminding us that these two functions might throw exceptions. The reason for this is because we can't return some default value if one of these functions gets called while the stack is empty because we don't know what type the value is. We only have this placeholder t, so we'll need to keep this in mind while we write our unit tests. All right, so I've created this new file here called zstacktest.cpp, and inside of it, uh, you'll see that I have some basic setup done. At the top, we're including everything we need for our tests, the stack object, the student object, the exception object, and of course, all the Google test stuff. And then down at the bottom, we have our main function. So now we need a test fixture, which is just a class that represents a test case. So I'm gonna paste that in here. And we can check this out. Now our test, uh, to test our stack, we need an instance of it right here. So our test object is gonna be called student stack. And you can see that it's just a Z stack object and it holds Z student objects. We're also going to write some other functions that we will reuse in multiple tests later on. So the first of these is going to be called test empty stack. And this tests uh, three things while assuming that the stack is empty. First, we'll make sure that the is empty function returns true. And then we'll test top and pop and make sure that both of them throw exceptions when the stack is empty. The next function we'll write uh, will be called test top student. And in this function, we call the top function, and then we make sure that the return student object from that call is the one that we expect, the one we pass in here. We'll do the exact same thing for test pop student. And then you'll notice that both of these calls right, are surrounded by a try catch clause. Um, this is because both functions might throw exceptions, like I mentioned earlier. So we want to be able to control these failures. All right, so now we're ready to actually write our unit tests. So we'll come down here and we're going to have four tests. So first we'll test a stack that has just been initialized. So let's call it init student stack. And here's what it looks like. So in this test, uh, we call test empty stack. And then we erase the stack. And then we call test empty stack again. Uh, doing this, um, this should be good enough to convince us that our stack is initialized correctly. Next, we're going to test our push function. So let me paste that in here. So this is going to be called, um, uh, actually, this will be called push student. There we go. And so in here, you'll see that um, we're creating a new student object, and then we're pushing that student onto the stack. And then to make sure that it worked correctly, we're making sure we're going to test that the size of the stack is one after pushing one student. And then we're going to test uh, the top student and make sure that it's student one. We'll do this, the same thing uh, two more times. Uh, so we push student two, make sure the size is two, and make sure the top student is two. And then for student three, we do the same thing, make sure the size is three, and make sure the top student is three, all after uh, the push. Now let's do the pop function. And so we're going to call this one pop student. And in here, um, first thing we're doing is, is we're going to test the stack with one student on it, and then we're going to test the stack with multiple students on the stack. So let's look at this first part. So we're creating a, a new student, and we're pushing the student onto the stack. And then we're, in this function, test pop student, we're popping that student off of the stack and making sure that the student that got popped off the stack is this one right here, student one. And then since there was only one student on the stack, we want to make sure that the stack is empty after the pop. Then we can do three more students. So we uh, create three more and push, push all three of them. And then we pop each one off one by one, and we test the state of the stack again. So we'll test the size of the stack right after we pop the student off. And then we'll test that the top student after the pop was the student underneath. So you can see um, that right here. And then the final student down here, um, after we pop that final student, the stack should be empty. Okay, and so for our final test, uh, we will make sure that our erase function is working correctly. So erase student stack. And it's similar to the last one where we test the stack with one student on it, and then we test the stack again with multiple students. So we push on uh, student one here, 
we erase the stack and make sure that it's still empty or that it's empty after the race, uh, after the erase. And then we create three more students, push all three of them on, erase the stack again, and uh, make sure that the stack is empty after that erase. So that does it for our tests. So all we have left to do is to update our CMake list file and build our, our test executable and then run our tests. So let's go over to our CMake lists.txt uh, file, the one that's in the test directory. Open that up and let's take a look down here. So um, we're telling CMake to add an executable called zstack tests, and it needs zstacktest.cpp to compile. And then we link the Google test libraries uh, with our executable. So now let's head over to the terminal. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, cd into the build directory. Then just type ls. And if you don't see any of these files, then you just need to run cmake dot dot. And it will generate all those for you. So I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. And then all we have to do is just build. So we have to just run make. So once that builds, uh, we can go ahead and run our tests. Uh, we can do that by uh, typing dot forward slash, and we'll say test, and then z stack tests. So we'll run this. And you'll notice that we get all kinds of stuff that looks like errors here. Uh, this is because we haven't actually implemented our stack template class yet. So this is what we actually expect right now, is all these tests to fail. So take a minute to look through all this output and get familiar with the way that Google Test shows failures. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope this made sense to you, and I hope that you learned something new. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And in our next video, we'll implement our stat class and then run our tests again to verify that our implementation is correct. So we'll see you there. Thanks for watching.